the long weekend continues this time with a mailbag monday let's start with this one diy prototype pcb board printed circuit board board ah i was wondering when these would show up these are more more prototyping boards but these particular ones are the ones that uh i've only well i don't know uh, they're not that easy to come by they are laid out exactly like that well not exactly because that center track has those two buses but almost exactly like that um do i have any like this so far no i've got these Vero board type and I've got the ones with the dots on them and what else have I got uh, da, 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 da. where are they here we go I've got those ones and I've got these ones but now these if I come up with something on a solderless breadboard I can go straight to here with pretty much zero thinking involved just transplant them right on because they are the same pattern exactly that's cool and what they get here it's like 10 of them here we are 10 times diy prototype paper 4.8 by 13.3 centimeter pcb universal experiment matrix circuit board got these ones from 2011 access city um that's not what i paid for them that's what they're going for right now I paid uh, $4.99 American, which is $6.62 Canadian. Um, do they have much to say about these? Not really. Thickness 1.5 millimeters. The whole spacing is 2.54 millimeters or tenth of an inch, which is fairly standard. Um, yeah, 10 pieces, one set. Next in, one times expansion board module, one times, four different things that are labeled one times expansion board module. It's always exciting, a multi-pack from the same vendor. Oh, hey, let's just start right on the top here. We have a, well, what you call a chicken stick kind of. It is a non-contact voltage detector or at least that's what it theoretically is it looks like a screwdriver don't be poking that in it should be able to pick it up via inductive you can do direct but don't do that that's dangerous let's open it up and see if it has batteries included oh really underneath the little pocket clip there is a screw that's annoying and it's a little Phillips screw okay huh does it even need batteries it would have to if it's inductive it's not going to you what's that let's just go in a little bit here that's a bit bothersome that wire lead coming around the back and maybe touching that screw is it supposed to uh ick man i was out of frame Okay, so we got two little chrome plated plastic buttons that make contact onto there on the board, which means you're part of the circuit inductively. Um, we've got what looks like a handful of resistors that go onto. that little thing that little it looks like an lcd 
Um, 100 with five more zeros after it. Five, six, seven zeros. That's like 10, 10 meg. Okay. And uh, 27 and five zeros after it. 36 and four zeros after it. Jeez. Okay, those are some ridiculously high value resistors all seriesed up there. Okay. So at least I know that it's a low resistance path to ground. Um, that wire was on the back of the board when I sort of vaguely touching the screw. Man, I should have actually tried this before I went in here, but whatever. Odds are she's not going to work anyways. I've got a better one regardless. But let's just put the screws back in and go off to the listing and check while I'm putting this back together here. 12 to 250 volt AC DC digital electrical tester pen probe voltage inductance detector. I uh, got it from DIY box along with a bunch of other stuff in the same bag. I paid 99 American pennies or $1.31 Canadian. And not a lot to say about it. Plastic shell, digital LCD display, mm. all operation works by two button soft handle. Right. Let's see if it works or if it kills me. Alrighty. We have the yellow thing and just for fun, a yellow power bar. And she's on. So, inductive. Oh. Oh. Shockingly, well, maybe not shock, bad word for this, surprisingly. Okay, so I'm holding the inductive button. I'm touching the white wire, and I get a little lightning bolt. Cute. Okay, now the dangerous one. What happens if I'm holding the button mark direct? And I put that in there. First of all, ooh. Okay, so I'm guessing since it's the neutral wire that lit up, or what's supposed to be the neutral wire, and what's supposed to be grounded here or to the neutral. Actually, I'm not even touching the thing with my hand. And I'm still getting the inductive one off when I physically touch the neutral. Okay. But when I touch the direct button and I touch it to there, I get a really big number shows up on there. And it says VVVVVVVV voltage. That's cute. It says it's good up to 250 volts. And since I do now have a source of that, Courtesy of my local goodwill. It's transformer isolated, so I'm less concerned. So let's hold the inductive button and see what happens when I just sort of pass it around in there. Not much. Okay, hold the direct button. Oh, and I get my big number again. Let me just zoom in a little bit here. So I touch the contact when I'm holding the direct. It does that when I'm holding the inductive. Yeah. <laughs> to my surprise, it actually sort of works. Am I going to use this to protect myself from getting killed if I'm working inside a panel or something? Hell no. But for 99 American pennies, it sort of works. All right, on to the next thing. 
And the next thing in there is, oh, one of these little, little dome touch switches that goes out to a set of pins. Okay, so we've got four switches, five wires, five pins. So one of those wires is going to be common. I'm going to guess that it, the common is going to be the one that's different down here. Let me pause for a second and figure out how I'm going to test this. I guess the obvious answer is some header pins plugged into there and a meter with some clip leads. So go on to what I assume is the common with the black and go on to the first pin with my red lead one. No. Okay. So the first pin is button two intuitively. The second pin is button one. The third pin, any bets? Yep, four. And the fourth pin. Oh, come on, stop shorting. Button three, right. There, the fourth pin is button three. Of course it is. Okay, but still, that's the kind of a kind of a thing that you would put on the outside of a project case and r just run the wires in through a slot and it would look actually pretty slick. Hmm. Let's find out what that cost me. Alrighty. Uh, 4x4, 4x3, blah blah blah, multiple variants, keys, matrix, keyboard, array, membrane, switch, keypad, keyboard. From DIY Box. Of course it is, because everything in this package is from them. Cost me 99 American or buck 31 Canadian. And actually, I got it at an auction, I think, but uh, I can't find the actual listing, but this is the same seller and they're selling it here. So there we go. Let's see what else was in this package here from... DIY box, I think it was called. So we got a kit and a thing, and okay, this will be quick. Um, we got some circuit board mount, three and a half millimeter audio type jack type connectors. So they are three conductor, so not appropriate for this guy. But it'll fit in there. So yeah, tip ring sleeve audio connectors. Okay. And what is there? Three, four, five, six. Let's go about ten-ish or so. Ten pieces, 3.5 millimeter, five pin, stereo headphone, audio jack, earphone socket D for some reason. Um, from DIY box, of course, because that's where everything in this package came from. Dollar uh, thirty-one Canadian. Other things in that package. We have this kit here. What is it? Surface mount, a bunch of surface mount stuff. Tensiometer, some LEDs. Um, that chip, there's two chips. That one is a 555. That one is. I think it says 4817. That's 4017. Aha! It's this circuit again. 555, 4017, bunch of LEDs, which we'll chase in a pattern like that. Okay, but it's a surface mount one. I seem to be addicted to this circuit. I keep buying different versions of it. As suspected, 555, 4017, chaser flowing water, red light LED, DIY kit, soldering practice kits. Uh, another buck kit or dollar thirty one Canadian from DIY box. And the last thing in that multi pack of goodness, what is this little guy here? It says uh, VI ground VO. We have a transistor, we have a couple of 
what look a fairy capacitor like. We have a diode and we have an inductor. Booster maybe? Voltage boost converter? Oh, what does that say over there? Canton power. Hmm. Yep, that's exactly what it is. DC to DC, 0.8 to 3.3 volts to 3.3 mini step-up boost converter module voltage converter Arduino. Um, so, okay. Oh, and I won it at auction for 86 cents. Hmm. Specs. Input voltage 0.8 to 3.3 volts. Output 3.3 volts. 500 milliamps. Um, do, 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 uh, various currents and voltages at different uh, ranges. So it seems to have a fixed 3.3 volt output no matter what you throw into it. And it oscillates as all boost converters do. And this particular one's at 150 kilohertz. Okay. So just your basic little, very basic boost converter. I haven't learned anything since the last time I did one of these. Here's a package which, pretend I haven't opened it yet, is called Expansion Board Module. But in it is a set of test leads, which are banana jack on one end and clip leads on the other, which saves having to take a set of clip lead wires and putting them onto your probes to go into whatever circuit you're working on. Okay, fine. Handy, and I'm willing to bet that these were cheap because there's not much to them really. Yeah, they were cheap, 99 Canadian cents, which is probably in the 70 cents American range or thereabouts. Uh, alligator test lead clip to banana plug probe cable one meter from Good Module. Somebody who I bought from in the past a many, many times. Well, let's see what else I got here. Plastic enclo. Plastic enclosure, maybe. Project boxes, maybe. They are, in fact, project boxes. Little beige ones this time, or gray, or something. Again, they just clip together. They're not screwed down, because that would cost more money. Okay, they have some little turrets inside that you could use self-tapping screws to get into. Um, the lids clip on fairly solidly. Where's the other? Here's some that I've had before. So these are a little bit smaller. Um, what do we got for a size here? Okay, my grid's in inches. So that's just shy of two inches by pretty much exactly three inches. Or for the rest of the planet, eight centimeters by five centimeters. Plastic enclosure case DIY electronics project box electrical equipment IBCA from Intimate Baby Zero Zero. Hmm. Dollar uh, thirteen with seventy cents shipping. And I think the last thing for today, ex another expansion board module. See, it really is a common description. Oh, there's two pieces in there. Um, let's see what we got. Comes with header pins, always a good choice. So what do we got in the back of here? We've got an out, a ground, a serial clock, a serial data, a VCC, and another ground. And the clock has a square pin. Looks like it's got some I2C pull-up resistor pads. If you choose to use them. What's on this side? A little six pin chip, a couple of resistors, and some address pins for the I2C bus. So it calls itself an MCP4725. We have one slash two slash five pieces. I bought two of MCP4725, which is what it says in the board. 
I2C DAC Breakout Development Board Module 12-bit resolution. It's a digital to audio, no, uh, yeah, digital to analog converter. So, what this does for your average Arduino or other microprocessor, microcontroller, the only, when you do an analog write command, what it actually does is pulse width modulation. But if you want a solid analog voltage, nice and stable, um, you need a digital to analog converter, which is what this is. So it's I squared C control digital analog converter. Oh, if you control it quickly enough, you can make sound right. So 12-bit resolution, which is higher resolution than the analog input on Arduinos and other similar boards. Those are only a 10-bit resolution. Um, not that that matters because this is an output, not an input. Uh, what else can we say about it? It runs on anywhere between 2.7 and 5.5 volts, so it can work with the typical Arduinos, which are a 5-volt chip. It can also work with the ESP8266 series of uh, chips, a type of chips, which are 3.3 volt. And it can run on a slightly lower battery voltage too, so it doesn't really care that much. Nice. So here we have all our stuff. Uh, I like this assortment of things. These boards are going to come in handy, although I just noticed a couple of them have pretty crappy etching job on them. I'll have to be careful when I use them. Um, yeah, it's the, I've never played with digital analog converters before really. Um, audio outputs, I've got several uh, boards and modules that uh, could really benefit from having a good audio output and a box to put them in. Test leads are always useful. My favorite circuit, the 555 and 4017, very nice. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping pay for my addiction. Um, and everybody else, thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you later.